Oop, we just got one attendee. Okay, so we are broadcasting and we are live and we have three attendees at the moment. Mm -hmm. so when you're ready, just let me know and I'll get started. Oop, we just got one attendee. Okay, so we are broadcasting and we are live and we have three attendees. Okay, Kelly, uh, it's 4.30. You want to go ahead and hit the record and we'll start off? Okay. All right. So we are live. We are recording. I'll uh, start with the script. The July 2nd, 2020 meeting of the Yarmouth Conservation Commission is about to be convened. As a precautionary measure to reduce the spread of coronavirus, all town buildings are closed to the public. Therefore, this meeting will be held by remote participation. My name is Kelly Grant and I'll be moderating participation for this meeting. I will now turn it over to the chair of the meeting. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, my name is Ed Hoops and I'm a chair the chairman of the Yarmouth Conservation Commission. I will begin by taking a roll call for quorum. Uh, David Bernstein. Here. Rick Bishop. Yay, here. Uh, Tom Durkin. Here. Ed Hoops is here. Uh, Paul Huggins is not present. Uh, Ellie Lawrence? Present. And Patricia Mulhern? Yeah. All right, with a quorum present, I will now call the meeting to order. Uh, when I ask the moderator to explain how remote participation works. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, and the governor's March 23rd, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Yarmouth Conservation Commission is being conducted by remote participation. No in-person attendance will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access and participate in the proceedings as provided for in the order. Applicants can use the raise hand button or press star nine on their phone to identify themselves to the chair. The meeting host will unmute applicants when they are called upon to speak. All participants are asked to identify themselves by first and last name and affiliation for the public record before speaking. All votes must be roll call votes. After a motion is made and there is a second, the chair will ask the moderator to take the roll call vote. The moderator will report the roll call vote. 
If it appears the meeting cannot or should not proceed, then the moderator will recommend that the chair request to continue the hearing to a later date and time and or until public meetings can resume normally. I will now hand the meeting back to the chair. You're muted, Ed. You're muted, Ed. You're still muted. Okay, now I'm going to do it. Sorry about that. Again, this is the the uh, Conservation Commission meeting for Thursday, July 2nd, 2020. Uh, moving right into the first order of business, we have a request for determination of applicability uh, for Great Island Ocean Club Beach Area off Powers Lane, map and lot 15 and 19 uh, Yarm for Yarmouth, Massachusetts, proposed split rail fence within a coastal beach and land subject to coastal storm flowage. And um, is, it, is it Dan who's, in, who's representing this? Um. This should be Mr. Dobel, George Dobel, maybe in the audience. Um, if, oh, here we go. So raising the okay, hand. is that the ID 830? Yes, um, if right. you'd like to unmute yourself, I've allowed you to speak. Okay, you thank go. you for your time. I'm George Dobel. I live at and represent the board of Great Island Ocean Club. Our okay. Our request is to install a 30 foot long cedar split rail fence to deter non GIOC residents from bringing dogs from Seagull Beach onto GIOC Beach all summer. The dogs run free all year long on the beach and they enter from Seagull Beach and all summer long they come before eight o'clock and after 5 p.m when the guards are not there at the parking lot at seagull beach gioc will post a no dog sign no dogs are allowed in or on the beach for gioc residents kelly and audubon are aware of the problem gioc will hand dig and install the fence themselves Thank you for your consideration. All right, thank you, Mr. Dogel. Um, I'm gonna uh, send it right to the commission. Any any concerns with this uh, from the commission? I have one, I have a question. David? Yeah, um, first of all, I fully understand his idea, his problem with dogs. I was on the beach twice this, well, many times this past week, but uh, there are people, dogs between 6.30 and eight when I'm there in the morning and uh, running free and one dog was chasing the bird. So I asked them to leave, which they kind of gave me a hard time, but I think they finally did leave. So I understand that. My concern is that um, when I went over and looked at the posts, it seemed that the that 30 feet is a little overkill. And I'm wondering whether we look at two 10 foot um, because the, the, 20, the 30th foot actually hits high tide at least the one morning i was there the water would have been up to the um to the fence um and secondly if you can see that on this picture that little um sign that is totally washed out that to me would help solve the problem too if um they redid that sign that's they have that sign that sign doesn't say anything it's just it's blank is that what well it, it used to say something but it's totally but you can't washed read it out. yeah can, can I that's answer? It. Okay, Mr. Dogel. Yes, that, that sign says no trespassing, no dogs allowed. And as soon as we spray that sign, somebody spray paints over it. It's been there for three or four years and it's just, it doesn't work. So we're going to have stencils and move that sign by the split rail fence. And as soon as they spray over it, we'll spray it again. But the people coming from Seagull Beach bring a can of spray paint. That sign's been up for about three years. And if 
we measured the, the fence. In fact, Kelly was there one day when we staked it out. I don't believe it comes anywhere as close to high tide. I think we still have like 10 feet. The, the seaweed you see at high tide is the full moon, March, early April, big storm that's remaining. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, anybody else among the commission uh, has any comments, concerns? Yeah, I do, Ed, Ellie. Hey, Ellie, go ahead. Um, looking at the photos that they gave us about the signs that they're gonna put up, I think that that's really overkill. And uh, with the prevailing winds that we get there, that's just gonna be um, a windbreak um, and could become debris on the beach. Um, if they could do it smaller size, that would be great. Uh, the two of them, that size I think would be just, just overkill. And I also agree with uh, David on the fence being, you know, let's get it back to 20 feet just as a deterrent instead of uh, just bringing it all the way out to the, whether it was a storm tide or a moon tide or whatever that is the high, high of the tide. And I think that's too long. Can't, okay, I agree. Right. Can, uh, anybody else? Uh, can I, can I answer that? Yeah, Mr. Dogo, go ahead. The uh, reliable fence makes uh, 10 foot sections and eight foot sections. Would you be amenable to three at eight or a 24 foot section? And then tell us what size sign you would like us to do and we will do it. I mean, personally, for, um, for my, myself, I, I would say either 16 or, or 20 foot, but nothing more than 20 foot. 20 foot would be the maximum that I would, that I would feel comfortable with, uh, with permitting. The sign, I, you know, that's entirely up to you. I, I'm, I, I don't think we should get involved with, with uh, telling you what size and what kind of sign you should, you should put up. Right, anybody else? Is, is that commission, are you... Are you along that same line, the 16 or 24 foot, or sorry, 16 or 20 foot. Yeah, and Rick Bishop on this, I'm with you on that. Yeah, Rick, okay. Ellie, you, that you agreed to that? Yeah, no, I agree with the fence, but uh, I, I think the sign, I don't want to make a regulation on this, but uh, they should shorten the sign uh, or make it smaller just so that they don't have the uh, windage that it's going to create. Well, they could actually put it on the, on one of the posts for the for the fence too. That's that's what we plan on doing. Okay. So it, it would be attached to, you know, the top and bottom rail. And in fact, we would need to bolt it in somehow so nobody takes it out. So that that fence that that sign will be anchored sufficiently. Okay, so it's a hand, hand. You're hand digging the holes, right? Correct. Okay, and then you're going to either do a, a either a 16 or a 20 foot uh, section would, is is what the commission is is going toward. Uh, uh, David, you had a you had a you, I know you had a, had a you were the first to state your opinion. So you are are you good with that as well? Yes, definitely okay. 20 feet, no more. All right. Uh, anybody else in the commission? Yeah, if I can ask Kelly a question, if they if they bolt that sign to the top and bottom of the um, split rail, how would that affect the uh, movement of the sand and the dunes and all that? Do you know? If it's not too large a sign and it's just um, attached to one of those posts, then it should be okay. You might want to just specify, Ellie, if you have a particular size in mind, if it's like two by three feet or something like that, or uh, or smaller than that. I, I would go probably like two by 18 and uh, two by a foot and a half. I think three feet is going to be way too big for the prevailing winds that we have there. So 18 by 24 inches. That's correct. Okay. And then we're looking at 20 feet maximum length of fence. So that would be two 10 foot um, sections or um, two um, eight foot sections at 16 feet. Well, we'll, we'll, 
we'll opt for the the two at ten. Thank you. And sorry, if no, none of the other commissioners had a comment, I've got just one other comment. I I have a question on. I'm I'm not sure. Did we propose one sign or two signs? Um, it looks like just one sign is in the description. Yeah. Okay. So you're okay with one sign as long as it's 18 by 24. Uh, I'm sorry, 18 by 24. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Kelly. What would uh, you, I know you had you had something. Um, so in terms of the um, natural heritage with the um, plover habitat here, I would just suggest that the work be done outside of the nesting season so that um, it really negates the need for any further input um, at this point from them. Okay, what are, you, are you looking at, at August 15th then? Um, yeah, that would make sense. Okay. All right. So... The sign not to exceed 18 by 24, the 20 feet no longer than 20 foot uh, split rail and um, construction to be done by hand and the uh, work to be done after August 15th. Anything else? Mr. Duggle, you're, you understand all those, right? I wrote them down and that's acceptable. And I thank you for your time, everyone, and your consideration. Okay, hold on. We have, I think we have somebody in the in the audience who has a question. Oh nope, that's Mr. Dogle. Okay. Anybody else in the in the audience who have any any concerns or comments the, about this? I see no hands being raised. Okay, any further uh, discussion amongst the commission? No, I make a motion that we uh, recommend a, a negative three determination with uh, the conditions that you had stated. Okay, thank you, Ali. Is there a second? Second. All right, David, uh, seconded. Uh, Kelly, would you call the roll, please? Um, I'm sorry, could we just, um, could we amend the motion to a negative two because this is in a resource area? Sorry, I didn't put that on the um, report, but it would be a negative two because it's actually within a resource area. Okay, Ellie, you're good. Okay, I make a motion that we do it with a negative two then. Okay, David, good? Yeah, yes, second. All right, all right so we're all set. Uh, Kelly, you want to call the roll? What? Bishop? Aye. Durkin? Aye. Bernstein? Aye. Lawrence? Aye. Hoops? Aye. Mulhern? Aye. Motion carries six to zero. All right, thank you, Kelly. Uh, our next order of business. Thank you, everybody, for your time and consideration. Thank you, Mr. Douglas. Safe. Thank All right, you. you too. Uh, our next order of business is another request for determination of applicability for Jeff and Linda Cook, 98 Driftwood Lane, Yarmouth, Massachusetts, proposed replacement of a timber retaining wall within the buffer zone to a coastal bank. And Mark, are you, Mark Burgess, are you uh, representing this uh, this applicant? I am. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we got you. Go ahead. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah. So this is an RDA. Uh, Kelly and I had spoken about it earlier. Um, the wall is on a surveyed plan. So this is a sketch plan of the replacement. Basically, we're going to leave the existing wall alone because it's just become one with the bank. And to remove it, to put a wall in place, I think creates more of a hazard than we're trying to fix. So a new wall, timber wall, would go in front of it with six by six posts, um, three by 12 planks. It'll be anchored, it can be anchored with uh, duckbill anchors, which can be driven by hand. And uh, the narrative describes about 70 feet of wall that needs to be replaced. The actual location of the wall in the area is buffer zone. It's the wall that's on the landward side of the top of the coastal bank as it's shown on the plan. So uh, it's in the, all the work is in the resource uh, is in the buffer zone and it certainly won't impact the, uh, the resource area. Um, that is about it. It's a replace 
sort of in kind, a little bit different, but it's a timber wall that's there now. And um, any, any gap between would be filled up with some uh, compatible soil and uh, six inches below the top of the new wall. So it stays put. Okay, thanks, Mark. Uh, anybody in the commission? No, no, nothing from the commission. Uh, Kelly, you okay? Yep, I have no comments. Right. Is there anybody? No, quite I'm honestly, sorry. I'm surprised. Uh, this is just a comment. Quite honestly, I'm surprised that wall is still holding. <laughs> I'm with you. All right. Any further amongst the commission? Anybody in the audience who has any comments or concerns about this project? If not, uh, would somebody like to make a motion for a negative three? So moved, Bishop. All right, uh, Rick, thank you. Is there a second? Second, Ellie. Ellie seconded. Uh, Kelly, would you call the call the roll, please? Go on, Bishop. Yay. Durkin. Aye. Bernstein. Aye. Lawrence. Aye. Hoops. Aye. Mulhern. Aye. Motion carries six to zero. Thank you very much. Um, right. Kelly, do you mail that to me or just email it to me or what? Um, if you're okay with just email, then um, that is that would be great. Otherwise, I can mail it to you if you want a paper copy. Uh, I would say email it. And if the client uh, wants an actual paper copy, I'll, I'll print out from the email, obviously. But this isn't recorded, so I'm fine with that if you are. Okay, sounds good. Awesome. Thank you guys very much. Have a great fourth weekend. Okay, you too, Mark. Thank you. Take care. All right. Uh, next order of business, another uh, request for determination of applicability. This is continued from May 7th, May 21st, June 4th, and June 18th for Aunt Edith's Neighborhood Association, Aunt Edith's Road, South Yarmouth, replacement in kind of 10, 12 inch pilings associated with the license pier and Bass River. Uh, Kelly, did we get anything for this? Oh, looks like we have. Um, Dan, right, Dan. Dan, I haven't received any new material, but Dan, I have allowed Dan to speak if he wants to. Okay. Dan, you want to go ahead? Sure. Yeah. I apologize for the delay on this. I keep meaning to get it in. And I think we, we talked briefly about a game plan before. Uh, the association did finally meet and decided that uh, what they would like to request is um, to reduce the overall length of floats uh, down just a little bit underneath what's permitted now. So we're getting rid of the southernmost uh, stretch, which is a six by 20. And that would put the overall running length of, of dock uh, within their permit. And uh, the, so the acquiesce on the additional length, we won't request any additional length. We'll move the end uh, pile up uh, to match that length. Uh, but I just don't quite have the drafting done. I wanna go out and check a couple of things. The float size is, it was a little bit like the house that Jack built before with the various sizes. And I just wanna make sure we document carefully what we're requesting this time. I think overall it's, um, it's a little wider here, a little narrower there, but very similar to what was permitted before. And so hopefully that'll let us move forward um, and, uh, and uh, get this thing into compliance. And then it will be a much less than 10% change. So um, the, um, uh, chapter 91 and so forth um, can be amended if required, but certainly as a minor amendment, not as anything significant. Um, and that would allow us to replace those piles um, with your blessing. Um, the work is in the middle of summer now, so it can't be done, but uh, I'll get the plans in for the next meeting and we can chat about it. And if there's any questions, I hopefully could answer them at that time. Okay, that sounds good. So we're going to continue you, and you'll definitely be able to get this in by, uh, by the 16th then, Dan? Yes, no problem. I've well, actually, you'll, you'll be able to get it in at least a week, the, the, the plan a week before? Before the meeting, yeah, should be no problem. I've just about got it done now. I just, I, I got to run out there and check a couple piles to make sure I've got the alignment just right. Other than that, it's ready to go. Okay, so uh, I, can I get a, a motion to continue to July 16th? So moved. All right, David. David. All right, and is there a second? Second. second. Um, uh, Tom, thank you. Uh, Kelly, would you call the roll, please? Bishop? Aye. Durkin? Aye. Bernstein? Aye. Lawrence? Aye. Hoops? Aye. Mulhern? Might be muted. Aye. Sorry. 
Motion carries six to zero to continue to July 16. All right, thank you, Kelly. Uh, thank you, Dan. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Paul. All right, uh, next order of business, we're moving on to certificates of compliance. Um, well, I, I think we only have one easy one, so we'll just take everything in order as we go. Um, my first one is a certificate of compliance request for SE 83-2139, 25 Powers Lane, Yarmouth. Uh, Kelly, you wanna give us a quick rundown on this? Or, um, so everything looked okay um, based on the um, request submitted. Um, there was some dune reconstruction that was done that you can see in the um, photo here, which um, as far as I can tell matches the um, pretty closely the previous grades um, that were in that area. Obviously, it'll take a little while for those grasses to become established, but we didn't include a time frame for allowing that before the order was closed out. So, um, but it, it looks it looks pretty good and, um, at the moment. Um, the only thing that came up is that there was a tree, um, an eastern red cedar, um, which was to be saved. Um, I'm just get forward. So on this is the um, proposed plan. And if you can see my cursor, there was a tree here that was um, to be preserved and protected. And that um, is no longer there. This is the area here where that dune reconstruction is because it's right next to it was where they put the um, leaching field in for the septic system. Um, I think there was also a tree that was lost over here because I heard that um, this week that the, a tree was lost because of the water. <coughs> when that was put in um, and the water line, I think is this one here. So I think that this was lost in that process, but this one here was a quite pretty large tree, which was to be protected and then kept. So um, I don't know if you want to look at requiring um, the replanting of a tree in that, in that area, um, either before or as an ongoing condition. Um, and then there are, are a couple of pieces of, um, Okay, so the, the top right photo is a, a little slide that's apparently in there just temporarily for an elderly dog to use and that's going to be removed um, shortly um, and then just um, the deck um, brought back to its um, previous condition. Um, and there was a couple of pieces of trellis. Um, you can see one here behind these stairs and then there's one behind the other stairs here. But other than that, the Pilings are pretty open underneath the underneath the house. Um, so there's a few recommended conditions that should be included in the COC ongoing, which is 12, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Um, and then just I recommend the replacement of that red cedar that was lost. Okay, thank you, Kelly. Uh, Tom, you I think are the only surviving member that can actually remember when this was actually first permitted, <laughs> besides myself. Um, did we not say something about so that we didn't want anything under under the house like that trellis. This Do you was have a, any recollection of that? This one. This was a fairly recent one. I think there had been previous iterations, but um, this is this was this is two one three nine. So it was a fairly recent one, um, and and there was a condition that there not be trellis enclosing the foundation. But these were just two sections that were added at the back of the steps for um, and then the rest of the foundation is open. As I recall, uh, there was a serious concern about uh, the uh, fact that a trellis or other appendage would become a danger if it broke loose. Do you recall something along those lines? I mean, I, 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 I don't know if it was just because of the, of the flotsam, jetsam type uh, like you're saying, or if it was because of the, of the I mean, I, I was originally thinking it was because of the movement, the not allowing the dune sands to move back and forth freely. Uh, I do seem to recall something about the um, you know, becoming free. Uh, yeah. I just remember the, uh, the danger that it would uh, present as it flopped around. 
Yeah, the, Kelly, the two, it's, the two it's, concerns those are the were, only two, right? Yeah, the two concerns were the movement of sand underneath the building and if they broke away and became storm debris um, in a storm. So those were, that was the reason um, that the, and the foundation wasn't to be enclosed. Somebody has their hand raised a few when you're ready to go to them. All right. Uh, does anybody in the uh, anybody else in the commission have any comments, concerns before I go okay. over? If I if if I remember correctly, I think this one came after it was recommended that there is no enclosures there because of the flotsam and jetsam uh, issue if a storm comes through and the danger of it being impaling to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. um, and I do remember I was on the board when they did this because a water line, correct me if I'm wrong, was supposed to be going through a dune because they were going to originally level that dune. So they were digging it through the dune. And I'm guessing that's why that tree was lost because it upset the root system. But I don't see why the um, eastern red cedar was removed. That doesn't make sense unless it, for, it was for the heavy equipment. Okay, so then, so I think we're all in agreement that the tree needs to be replaced. That that red cedar. Yes. Everybody is saying. Yes. 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 All right. So hold on here. I'm gonna. Uh, if there's anything, uh, anybody else in the commission? If not, I have I'm a question. Go. I have a question. Yeah, David, um, go ahead. This is for me, not for. So, are we saying that when everybody anybody puts a house on what I'll call stilts, that we don't we want the underside to be open the whole the whole time or is it case by case? Uh, generally speaking, we, we try and keep it open uh, to allow, you know, doing the sand, the sand move, movement of sand okay. underneath the house. And the reason, the reason I ask is the house to the side of this on the other side of the path has stuff, you know, has some kind of wall of lack of better term fence or wall that, and I'm, I haven't walked around the whole neighborhood, but I'm just curious. That's yeah, all no, I might, well, that may also do, depending on when it was when it was uh, permitted okay. to. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that, right. that could have been before the the recommendation of not enclosing. Okay, so now I'm learning something. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anybody else in the commission? All right. Uh, Jay Robinson, uh, you have your hand up. You want to? Sure. Jeffrey Robinson. 25 Powers Lane, I'm the homeowner. Okay, did you have a comment? Kelly and I have been communicating about this red cedar. Neither myself nor our builder were certain that he removed the red cedar. We knew the one to the left, the water department removed. Uh, but I've subsequently emailed Kelly. I'd like to see if she could, she has the availability to meet me on at the house to show me where the, the cedar was removed from. Well, I think you're looking at, can you see the screen now? Can you plan? Do you see the plan? I see the plan. Okay, so that plan was drawn by Down Cape, I believe it was, and... Uh, clearly calls out the red cedar tree that's right there that Kelly is circling with her cursor. I see it. And it's not there now. So what the commission is asking is that they, they want you to put it back. Yeah, we, it, obviously we'll, we'll put back what is ordered to. Uh, just don't recollect it. And it's it's pretty close to the street. Well, that's all I can tell you is that the, I mean, Dan, 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 Dan is the, it was the re, the engineer of record. And yeah. I mean, he, he doesn't, he wouldn't put a, a tree on it if it wasn't on part of the property. So uh, for whatever reason, I don't know, I mean, I'm not sure if, it, you know, it, it may not necessarily have been you, but uh, ultimately, you know, you as the property owner have the responsibility for for maintaining the, the plan as it's as it's been approved. So, uh, commission feels that that trees are particularly important to maintaining, especially in this kind of environment, to maintaining soil stability. So, uh, so they, I think that's we're we're we're, we're adamant that you're going to have to have to replace that tree. 
Okay. Okay. That is fine. All right, thank you. Uh, so any further comment among the, the commission? If not, could I get a, a motion to uh, issue the, the certificate only after uh, the red cedar tree is replaced? And that's probably gonna have to take a little while since we're not in a good tree planting time right now. Um, and that they also recommended the ongoing conditions uh, that are recorded for 12, 15, 16, 17, 18. So moved, David. David, thank you. Second? Second, Ellie. Ellie seconded. Thank you. Uh, uh, Kelly, you want to call the roll, please? Oh, Bishop? Aye. Durkin? Aye. Bernstein? Aye. Lawrence? Aye. Oops. Aye. Mulhern? Aye. Motion carries six to zero. So um, just so I'm clear, um, you're approving the issuance of this of the certificate of compliance, but that will act, the document will actually be issued once the tree has been planted in the late summer fall. Is that right? That's right. Okay. All right, then you're you're all set, Kelly. I am, thank you. All right. Uh, next order of business is another request for a, a certificate of compliance. Um, this is for SE 83-175028 Television Lane, Yarmouth. And let's see, there are some issues with this too, right, uh, Kelly? That's correct. I'll we'll just um, change over the slides so we can have a look. Uh... So I'll go to the plans first. Um, so these are side by side of the permitted plan on the right and the as-built plan on the left. And um, there are a few things that are an issue. So the, the reason this came to light was that I had had a complaint um, within the neighborhood of um, flooding of um, people's property um, part of that is attributed to well, a large part of it is attributed to groundwater um, issues when we've had large rainfall events um, but also so, um, there was concern expressed about runoff um, from this property given the amount of fill that was brought in so I took a look at the file and this was for construction that was um, carried out in 2006 and a certificate of compliance wasn't requested at that time when the project was completed so I sent a notice to the property owner to have them um, file that request. So we received an as-built plan from Down Cape, um, which I was able to compare with the site as it is now and with the permitted plan. Um, some of the things of con a concern, the main thing is the location of the retaining walls. They were using retaining walls a lot on this property to try and reduce the slopes off the property because there was a large amount of fill brought in. So you can see along the front edge of the property here, there was a wall all the way around. And then there was a wall along here as well where the leaching field was. And then there was some slope area around this um, end of the property with a swale that was marked along at the bottom of that slope. Um, and if you look on the actual plan, the as-built plan, there's a couple of sections of the same here and here, which have garden beds and path up here. And the rest of this is sloping down all around here. Um, this is a flat driveway with a retaining wall along here, but this steep, steeply slopes down to the road all in this area through here. So there's no retaining wall in this area. The retaining wall does extend along the back here. So that's um, relatively flat in this area. There's a shed that wasn't permitted, but um, is part of the, um, the property now. Um, and then in this area here, the slope comes down pretty much right to the property line, whereas here the slope stops back from the property line, which I think was designed to enable some infiltration before the water leaves the property. Um, and the same around the side of the house here, there was a swale at the bottom of the slope, which here the slope runs straight out to the property line. So I'll just go to some of the photos so you can see. This is the back end of the property. This retaining wall runs out to the street and the slope 
ends pretty much at the property line, they assume runs somewhere through here. Um, this is the side of the property where um, there was to be a slope um, and this has been well vegetated and um, that there was to be a swale at the bottom of the slope. Um, so, I mean, this is very well vegetated. So the, the likelihood of um, runoff issues in this location are not so great. Um, this is the front of the property on the roadside. You can see the two small retaining walls that are used to enclose some gardens, but the rest of the slopes straight down to the road from the, um, from the structure. And then that's looking at it from the other angle, looking back towards the driveway. And then this is um, the back where that shed is, where the septic leaching field is. And this is a slope that comes right straight down to the road where there was to be a retaining wall all the way across here. So you would have had a flat so surface up the top here and you would have had a flat surface down the bottom here. So you wouldn't have got that um, same level of runoff. Obviously it's, it's lawn, so you know, there will be some infiltration, but not nearly as much as if you had had more level surfaces or had these heavily vegetated. Um, so just running through the list, that's the retaining walls. There are no gutters and downspouts on the house. I've, the engineer's letter says that there is a drip trench. I didn't actually see the drip trench, but there are gardens all the way around the house, which will be capturing a lot of that runoff. Um, but there are no gutters and downspouts. Um, the swale is missing from the west of the property. And the, as I said earlier, the um, slopes are ending at pretty much at the property line rather than back from the property line. That is all I have. Okay, well, I don't know. I mean, it's my opinion that, again, this is, this is another one of those floodplains, the floodplain filings that People got permits to do something and then they turned around and did something exactly opposite of what they were supposed to have done. So um, my my inclination would be to deny the COC and then also to issue an enforcement order uh, and begin enforcement proceedings to and, and have a discussion at some point in the future as to how to uh, go about uh, fixing all of this. That's just my opinion. I'm willing to listen. It looks like Rick has his hand up. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, um, I, I, I'm, in, I'm incensed, honestly. Um, I, I agree with you. I absolutely would not issue a COC to this property. property. Uh, the fact that they have um, disregarded essentially the majority of the uh, orders of conditions to me um, you know, if, if we don't hold their feet to the fire in this, we might as well just stop as a commission because if we're not gonna have our rules taken seriously and incorporated into the project, what's the point? So it's my opinion that we need to make them adhere to the COC that we put, the orders and conditions that we put forth originally. And, and I would have a very difficult time bending from any of them. Thank you. Thank you, well, well, well stated. Uh, anybody else in the commission? Uh, I agree with Rick. Um, if we don't hold their feet to the fire, there's no point in us sitting here deliberating over it. It's just a waste of our time. I agree as well. I, I okay, agree Tom. as well, Pat. And I agree and I have a quick question again for my own education. I'm mm -hmm. noticing a lot of houses are, uh, which normally would be level with the road before they get built or build, taking in all this dirt and loam and building up so the houses will be higher. Is that something we can deal with or is that just a building permit and we have nothing to do with that? Because this, this part of the solution of this originally would have been not to take all that stuff in, make it a higher house. I walked by there today, it's up about 10 feet, you know, and then that gives that house another 35, four, instead of 35 feet high off the road, it's 45 feet high off the road. So the reason that people um, do this is because they're building out of the flood zone. Okay. Um, so that they um, yeah. flood insurance. So it is, it is very common. Um, and the only way we've been able to um, mitigate against, you know, the impacts from it is to try and reduce the, that, um, you know, reduce the runoff from the site. Um, okay. 
but then there is okay. the consideration of how it impacts flood waters as well um, okay. as they enter these areas. Thank you. All right, anybody in the audience uh, have any, has there got somebody? Uh, Mr. Robinson, are you still, are you here for this or two or? No, I'm not, I'm just here as an observer. Okay. All right, anybody else? Uh, there's no nobody else in the audience. Um, anybody else in the commission? And so if not, uh, may I have an, an, a um, motion to deny the COC? So moved. All right, thank you, Ellie. Uh, is there a second? Second. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, Kelly, you wanna call the roll, please? Sure, Bishop. Muted. Aye. Durkin. Aye. Bernstein? Aye. Lawrence? Aye. Oops. Aye. Mulhern? Aye. Okay, so the, that motion carries 620 to deny the COC. Okay, and do you want a motion to uh, issue an or enforcement order? Yes, please. All right, so do I have a, a motion then from somebody uh, to issue an enforcement order for this property? So moved. Ellie. All right, thank, thank you, Ellie. Second? Second. Bishop. Right, thank, you, thank you, Brick. Uh, then, uh, Kelly, when you have a chance, uh, could you call the roll for that, please? Sure. Bishop? Aye. Durkin? Aye. Bernstein? Aye. Lawrence? Aye. Loops? Aye. Wilhern? Aye. So that's a motion carries six to zero to issue an enforcement order. Can I just get um, some feedback um, that the enforcement order would be asking them to address um, drainage from the property? Is that correct? Um, it doesn't necessarily have to return to the permitted plan as long as it addresses runoff issues. If they look at it and find other alternative means of doing that, would that be acceptable? I think, I mean, I don't care. So I don't care so much about the the uh, downspouts and, and gutters because uh, it does seem like it's well, there's gardens all around it. Uh, but the other issues, yeah, I, I think that's, yeah, I think you're hitting it right on the on the head. And I think we need to, and they need to, to permit the shed as well. Okay. And a time frame to act? 90 days. 90 days did I hear? Yeah, I think I think we'd have to go 90 because it's I mean I'm assuming they're yeah. gonna have to be doing some uh, some retaining wall work. That's that's not gonna be done next week. So yeah. so um, they would need to present a um, plan to the commission. Do you do you want a, a rest uh, I guess a restoration plan in 90 days, or do you want a notice of intent for the work in 90 days, or do you want the work completed in 90 days? Because we would need to approve whatever they're going to do before they do it. I think so. We're going to get this on for next next meeting, right? The enforcement, the it, or do we need to issue it again? Or uh, well, you voted to issue it, so I think that covers that. I can just issue okay. it. Um, All right. So we gave them. Um, if we gave them nine, uh, do you want to do like sixty days for them to actually have a a plan before you for approval? I'd say forty five days for a plan of plan for approval. And then another forty-five for implementation. Okay. If the, I mean, I'm just throwing those out. I'm going to ask the rest of the commission what they what their opinion is as well. I right right now I know that most of the landscapers and everything are backed up like two at least two to four weeks out. So um, I, you know I don't know if that's going to be accomplished in uh, forty-five days from the NOI. Um, maybe but they have 45 days to come up with the plan and then 45 days from then to do right, the right. So I think they also have a restriction on when they can do work in this neighborhood as well. So at least they can get the approvals in advance and then in the off season they can okay, carry out the work. All right, yep. Everybody else good with that? Yes, yep. yes, okay. All right, and you're all set there, Kelly. You need anything else? Oh, that's good, thank you. All right.
Uh, next order of business is another certificate of compliance for SE 83-1448-15 Flake Yard Lane, uh, Yarmouth. Um, Ed, if I may, do we have to uh, take a vote on that time limit? I know we already vote, voted on the uh, enforcement order. No, I think that was that was just uh, we we'll we'll just let Kelly write it as as part of the enforcement order then. Okay. Yeah, yeah, then that's good. No, thanks for asking, but no, we we don't need to. We don't need to vote on that because we voted on the enforcement order. All right. Um, let's see. So this one, we're good to we're good to issue. Actually, we can issue both of the, the next two. Would have have no no problems, right, Kelly? Um. Yeah. I'll just uh, quickly run through just so that you've got. Um... The overview. So there was a number of orders of condition that were open for this property. Um, we had five in total. Um, some of them work was done, some of them wasn't. So the um, the first one I think is fine to close out. Um, the work was partially completed, and then it was subsequently completed under a later order. So um, I think you could probably just for clarification go ahead and issue and, and vote on those first two. Okay. Um, and then we can go from there. All right. Is there any uh, questions from the from the uh, commission? If not, then uh, could I get a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for SC eighty three dash one four four eight seventeen Flake Yard Lane, and for SC eighty three dash one four six eight. Uh, also for fleet 15 fleet yard lane. So moved. Thank you, Tom. Uh, is second. there a second? Uh, was that David? Yep. Okay, David, thank you. Uh, Kelly, you want to call the roll? Bishop? Aye. Durkin? Aye. Bernstein? Aye. Lawrence? Aye. Oops. Aye. Mulhern? Aye. Motion carries six to zero. All right. Uh, next order of business: another certificate of compliance for SE eighty three dash one five one one fifteen Flake Yard Lane in Yarmouth. And we'll let Kelly get caught up here. <laughs> okay. So this one, the dwelling matched the approved plan. The grading seemed to be accurate. The hardscaping did um, differ a little. I'll just show on the screen how it differed. There was these deck areas that were approved here. And here, this deck over here is a little different in shape. This one is per the approved shape, but there was additional patio that was added in this location and in this location here. Um, they're both outside of the setback, so I didn't have a huge issue with that other than if there are runoff issues, um, there, I, which I can't imagine there are, especially if we have a good buffer zone of vegetation, which at this point we don't, but um, so I didn't have a, a um, a huge deal with with those additional patio areas. Um, there is an awful lot of hardscape on this property, um, but it is a large property. Um, so I'm just reading through my notes. So the additional areas that were included were actually a part of a subsequent order. So I guess you could effectively say that the commission accepted those on a later plan. So um, I, I don't have too much of an issue with those. This is where though that the driveway comes up that it was conditioned under this order to be pervious and it is um, concrete pavers. Um, that same condition is in a following order of conditions 1680. So again, you could um, issue the certificate of compliance for 1511, maybe with a note attached to that, that the um, paved driveway is being addressed through a later order, just so that it's clear that that COC is not accepting the paved driveway. Um, so that would clear that one off and then that would allow the paved driveway to be addressed under the later order. Okay, sounds good to me. All right, any discussion among the commission? As long as we're not giving up any um, leverage we may have by moving that 
paved driveway to the, uh, the 1680. I'm happy with it. Yeah, the condition was included in 1680 as well. So um, I feel like we're, especially if you include it in the motion that um, that the non-compliant driveway is being addressed in a later order. Okay. All right, you good, Rick? Yes, I am, thank you. All right, anybody else? If not, uh, may I have a motion uh, to issue the COC for SE 83-1511 uh, with the additional note that the paved driveway is being addressed in a later order uh, under SE 83-1680. Uh, and that by issuing this COC uh, for 1511, we are not approving uh, the uh, paved driveway. Wow, that's a mouthful, but I uh, make the motion. I make the motion. Say so moved. All right, just, yeah, just, just say so moved. Uh, so Ellie uh, moved it, is there a second? Second, Pat. All right, thank you, Pat. Uh, Kelly, you wanna call the roll? Bishop? Aye. Jerkin? Aye. Einstein? Aye. Lawrence? Aye. Oops. Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. The motion carries six to zero. All right, so next order of business then is a certificate of compliance for SE 83 16815 Flake Yard Lane. And Kelly, I think there's something about a paved driveway that we need to take up. <laughs> okay, so the, the pool was included in this um, order and that appears to have been completed per the approved plans. Um, based on um, aerials, I'm just gonna click through to some. Um, these are the photos of the driveway as it is at the moment. Um, these are some aerials that show in 2010 that the buffer vegetation was completed around the property. So under this order that work was completed. Um, however, the driveway appears to be paved um, in these images um, and it remains so now. Um, and they are concrete pavers and there doesn't appear to be any pervious nature to them. They're very close together, the, the pavers, so they don't allow for any infiltration or very little infiltration. Um, and there is um, indications of, a, um, of flooding issues from runoff on the neighboring property. I've seen pooling of water there and also um, runoff from the base of the driveway around to the, I'll just bring up the aerial again. Um, around this direction here, there's a slope down to the wetland and this property owner was finding when they put their planting mitigation in here, it was being washed out um, by uh, the flow of water coming down and around that corner. So we actually ended up getting them to put some little stop dams along here to try and slow the flow of water so that they could infiltrate some of that water without it washing out. So there definitely seems to be a runoff issue, um, which is obviously not surprising. So, um, I suggest that there needs to be some um, engineer input to a solution to addressing the runoff, uh, whether they remove some of the paved sections strategically to allow some areas for infiltration, or they could put in some trench drains, or you may just have to get creative with some solutions to that in light of the non-compliance. Okay, Kelly, the, the footprint of the driveway is, is the, what was approved, right? It's just the yeah. It appear it is different, but it does appear to be approximate in its area. Um, the landscaping is a little different to what was proposed. I think there may have been a little more out in this area here, um, which would act to stop some of the flow. So they could look at you know on how how well that landscaping was done according to the plan to kind of intercept some of that flow. Um, but for the most part, it appears to be. Um, in accordance with the plan. There were a couple of different versions of a plan on file. One showed an island up here in the center of the driveway with some landscape plantings, um, which um, is not on the site. So that's a, a, but then there was updated to remove that in another sketched out plan. So it was difficult to see what the actual approved plan was. Okay. 
So, so we have we have that, and we have the the mitigation planting that needs to be uh, um, brought back into compliance. So the mitigation plantings I was going to suggest be addressed in the following order, which was for the reconstruction of the revetment, because the plantings were actually completed under this order, because you could see that in the images. Um, and then when they got their next permit to do the revetment, that vegetation was then lost. So um, this order could um, be held to correct the issues with the driveway. And then the following order could be held to address the issues with the buffer vegetation because that the work kind of falls within those two different orders. Okay. Uh, do you need an enforcement? Are, are we going to need to have an enforcement order for this to, to uh, compel it or? Um, I mean, the, the property owner and their representatives have been working pretty well to, to get this resolved. So I think we could just start with a conversation and, and see where that takes us. Uh, if they could get a, um, a design to address the drainage and um, a planting plan to address the plantings, obviously that won't be able to happen till the fall. So maybe we could look at just setting a time frame for which um, they would come back to the commission with a proposed resolution to these. And then if we don't hit that time frame, then we could look at enforcement from there if that uh, made sense to you. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, Rick, I know you had a, a question. All right, did I hear you correctly? Did you say that the, um, the original photograph showed a paved driveway? Uh, 2000 and, oh no, these photos here, 2010 shows a paved driveway. Originally, um, like going way back before this house was built, I the the site was much less developed. So the, the reason I asked is I, I have some experience with those concrete pavers and I think an argument can be made for them allowing a certain amount of um, moisture to penetrate them. But I really wonder if the pavers were just put over the asphalt driveway. It's, oh, it's, okay. a, it's, uh, just a, it's an interesting point. I mean, it just kind of exacerbates the problem. But uh, that, that would be my guess. They just put, put the pavers right over them. So if they lost any, any ability to let water for so would you say that the water is infiltrating through the pavers themselves or through the gaps between the pavers? Typically it's the gap between the, the pavers. Yeah, and I took a, I didn't have it on here, but I took a photo of the pavers close up to see that and there is really no gap between them. I mean, it's a oh. very small gap. It's not like you have that, you know, kind of yes. stone dust gap in between. There's none of that. Very, very that's, what makes, that's what makes me think that these were put in over an asphalt driveway. Oh, okay. Because typically you put down bluestone dust as the base, and in between them you put a little bit of bluestone dust as a way to, to anchor them. So, so um, yeah, I mean, I guess I don't see anyone in the audience who, if you would raise your hand if you are related to this project, but um, I think that would be useful for their engineer to, to weigh in on that in terms of what the current state is in terms of drainage and, and how improvements could be made to that. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? So then Kelly, I think we're gonna uh, go ahead and not issue this, is that correct? And then... Um, so this is, six, uh, this is 1680. Uh, 1680. Yes, this is 1680. So um, that would be my suggestion. Okay, so we will make a motion to issue, and then if you don't want to issue it, you need to vote no. So I guess the other option is if you wanted to, them to provide a resolution, you could continue it, but it'll take some time. So I don't know whether they. Uh, no, I think we should. I think we should just clear it off and for now, and then uh, they can reapply then. Okay. All right, so do I have a motion to issue uh, the certificate of compliance for SE 83-1680? So moved, Ellie. Thank you, Ellie. Is there a second? Second, David. Thank you, David. All right, Kelly, uh, call the roll, please. Bishop? Nay. Durkin? Aye. So that's a vote to approve the COC, to issue the COC? Tom, did you want to say yes? No, you do want to issue? Yes. Yes, you said. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, Bernstein? No, nay. Lawrence? Nay. Hoops? Nay. Mulhern? Nay. Okay, so the motion does not carry five to one. All right, uh, next order of business then is another certificate of compliance for SE 83 1839 for 15 Flake Yard Lane. Okay, so this was the one um, under which the revetment work was done, which you can see in the image for 2012 where they replaced the revetment. Um, that order included a, um, a buffer, a buffer of vegetation. Um, which was not completed at the moment the, um, uh, let's go back. No, maybe I didn't include that photo. Um, shows just um, beds of mulch um, along the top of the revetment. So um, I would recommend not issuing the COC at this time until those dwellings have been, uh, those plantings have been um, added. Okay, and do you need a time frame for that, or do you just say no until they until they get it uh, corrected? Um, I, I think it would be good to set a time frame for the planting. So if the planting can be pl completed in the fall, then they could come back to us by the end of October, maybe. Okay, so do you want to put down the end of October, like October thirty first, or you want to say yep. October fifteenth, something like that? October thirty first works for me. Okay. All right. Any discussion among the commission? All right. So again, we will uh, we will frame the the motion to approve, and if you do want to approve it, say aye. If you do not want to approve, you do not want to issue the certificate, uh, then vote nay. So, do I have a motion to issue the COC for SE eighty three dash one eight three nine with the con additional condition? Uh, that it not be issued until October 31st, 2021, sorry, 2020, uh, pending uh, the replanting of the mitigation area. So moved. All right, thank you, Rick. Uh, sec is there a second? Second, Ellie. Thank you, Ellie. Uh, Kelly, you want to call the roll? Bishop? Nay. Um, Durkin? Nay. Bernstein? Nay. Lawrence? Nay. Oops. Nay. Mulhern. Nay. So the motion does not carry six to zero. So I will advise them to um, have the plantings completed by October 31st and then refile the request. All right. Thank you, Kelly. All right. Then moving on to our next order of business, uh, discussional violations. This is for number uh, one shore road for vegetation cutting. So this um, was brought to my attention. There's two different images here, 2017 and 2018. And 2017, there was um, an area of beach grass at the property. This is a neighborhood association or condo association parcel. Um, <clears throat> and it's um, partially um, contained by a revetment um, and then has um, sand behind that revetment and then it had beach grasses which um, apparently a piece of heavy equipment was used in 2000 well between those two dates to um, remove the vegetation from that area um, it sounds like the um, motivation was to create a, a larger gathering area for for people from the um, association um, so obviously have some limited space there and also the um, the high tide line comes right up to that wall these days, so they don't have an awful lot of beach space. Um, so I met with the property owner, I mean, sorry, the um, I think it was the president of the association and a couple of other members of the association today. Um, and we took a look and the a lot of um, the vegetation has actually grown back since it was cut. So um, the area is maybe two thirds, half to two thirds back to what it was before. Um, and we talked about um, 
what would be required of them moving forward. So, the, and I said that it would be up to you to determine what action you would require from them, but there were basically two options, one that they would replant and two that they would leave it to um, naturalize and maybe have some stakes put in to, to demarcate an area of vegetation. Um, so my recommendation, given how well it's coming back, is to just go with option two. I don't see much benefit in adding additional plantings to an area that is filling in very well on its own. So I would just suggest like a, a post and rope um, area to delineate that area of vegetation. Um, they, they did um, ask me about the ability to maintain this property so that they do have open area for people to, um, to use. Um, and I suggested that they file a request with the commission to demarcate an area that they are able to maintain as an open area. Um, and then that would allow you to review that and make a determination on, on what would be a, um, a reasonable area to, to allow them to maintain as open beach area. Okay. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm fine with that, uh, Kelly. I just would ask that they, uh, that we put a, a time frame on on them filing an RDA, so make it you know like October first or whatever. That's fine, uh, just so we have it. So we have a definite date by which, you know, we we uh, we get the get it resolved. So and that would include the symbolic fence as well in um, in that and the area that they would maintain as open area. Yeah, um, and and my only. My only issue with that is that if you know, did did you talk to them about roughly where the the line of demarcation would have to be? I mean, I, I assume you're going to try and take it back to what the original photo was showing. That that was my thoughts is to take it back to where it was shown in the photo. What they were um, looking to do was keep the area closer to the water, more open, and then maybe have more vegetation in the back part of the property so that there is that protection between the property and like the road and other buildings. Um, but that still gave them more of an open access area towards the water. Um, but um, I said, you know, they could document that in their, in their request and then um, and you could review that. But yes, my initial comments with that, to them were that that fence should follow the line of where the previous vegetation was. Okay. Anybody else in the commission have any comments, questions? Um, yes, me, David. David. I just wanna say I was there today with Kelly as for educational purposes. We'll see how she watched the whole process, but uh, they did, when she was off talking to uh, one of the, uh, another person, two of the men did um, admit to me that they did have a machine in there and actually the machine broke down and sat there for a little while, which is why uh, how I saw it happening all. So um, but I just, um, so at first they said, you know, that no work had been done since the late nineties, but uh, one of the men uh, had a recollection that, oh yes, that's right, two years ago we did this. So. Um, yeah, just that just um, reminded me that that was the other part of the violation notice was that they have three open orders of condition on this property. So that was the other part of our discussion today was that they need to get those closed out. Those orders were for um, work on the revetment and fill um, behind the revetment. So um, I also advise them that they need to have those closed out. I think I would ask for those COCs earlier than that, though. I'd, I'd give them a relatively short time frame to file for those. Okay, what uh, what time frame? Yeah, why don't you go 45 days at most? So what was the time frame that you provided for the RDA? That was October? Oh, well, we said October 1st for that, but... Um, and then 45 days for the open orders for the COCs. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean you're going to have to get an engineer out there, so that'll take, that's going to take some time, I would think, but... Yeah. Okay. Um, so in terms of process for this, um, I have already issued the violation notice. So shall I just clarify these requirements based on this conversation? Um, I don't feel the need for an enforcement order at this point because they are working to resolve the, the matter under the violation notice. Um, 
I don't know if you want if you feel the need for a vote or whether I'll just take this conversation back to them to provide them with uh, those those deadlines and then if they don't meet those deadlines we can look at an enforcement order. Yeah, no, I would say if they're if they seem to be working with you then we'll go ahead with that and if not if they change their minds or anything we can uh, okay. issue the enforcement order later then. Sounds good. Uh, Rick, I see your hand is up. Do you have a, a question? No, that was, uh, I, I neglected to bring it down from last time. Okay. Thank you. All right, any further discussion amongst the commission? All right, then I think we can move on to our update on doc violations. Um, I just have the emergency certification. Oh, sorry, no, we have got an update on doc violation. Um, okay, so I went out last week and checked in on our Bass River um, docks um, to see where they were at. We have from our list of, gosh, 10 to 15 properties that have a violation. Yeah, I think we had 10, 12 properties that had a violation. I think we have three now that are unresolved. So we've made some good progress. The rest are either resolved or um, in the, filing process. So we have um, the, a new notice, a couple of notices um, on the agen next agendas for um, a resolution to some of them. So three are ones that I'm going to have to take the next step on where we haven't um, gotten any compliance or moves toward compliance. Um, so I will issue an enforcement order for, for those. Um, and just thinking what I might do is draft an enforcement order and put those on the agenda with the specific address details and the nature of the violation. And we can put those on the next agenda for you to actually decide what action you want to take at this point. Cause we're, I think we're at the third season now of trying to get compliance on these. So um, people have had a lot of leeway to, to, to get uh, moving on this. Okay. That so I'll present good. the specific ones as enforcement on our, next agenda, even though our next agenda is going to go till midnight at this point. <laughs> um, and then in addition to that, um, I started looking at um, Sweetheart Creek. Um, I did a review of all the properties on Sweetheart Creek at um, the entrance to Great Island there. And about half to two thirds, I think, of those properties are non-compliant. Um, some minor, some fairly major. So I am also going to look at issuing some uh, violation notices for those properties um, to look at getting those into compliance as well. So I think maybe six properties along there will receive a violation notice. Um, and also while we're still in the season, looking to get up to the um, upper reaches of Bass River, just. Uh, to ch check out the docks in those areas and just um, any that we've missed previously um, to move on on um, notices for those while while we have the evidence in the in the boating season. Okay, sounds good. Um, there have been a number of other violations that have come up in the last couple of weeks, and I'm kind of work in progress on those. They're all at varying degrees of. Um, of the, of the process at the moment. So I'll give you a more thorough update, probably not at our next meeting because we've got a heavy agenda, but maybe the following meeting or we can maybe run through all of the violations that we have um, and just on the status of all of those. Yeah, Kelly, I mean, I would just tell you to, to you know, try and prioritize them as best you can, but, you know, I mean, you're only one person, so. Yeah. Um, it's, you know. <laughs> you could have a full-time job just dealing with this. <laughs> That's exactly right, as, as, I, as I well know. Um, yeah, so uh, I mean, and if you need if you need help with any of those, you know, feel free to, to ask me or see if anybody else would be in, be willing to help as well. But okay. um, but yeah, don't don't kill yourself with all this either. Okay. Because we need you for the long term. <laughs> but enjoy the boat rides when you get them. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yes, that is the the upside. I am um, so Kelly. I'll go out and kayak the creek and take pictures for her. Okay, that would be helpful. All you right, join, we, you can join us on Mill Pond and Crab Creek later, too. We're gonna we've got a few problems up there. Mm 
I mean, it's that one up by Pointer Rocks, is it? Yeah, yeah, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, any further discussion on that? All right. If not, uh, looks like Kelly has an update on the Seagull Beach Road culvert emergency certification. So this culvert has failed once again. It, it failed, I think, year before last, um, and they did a patch repair. I don't I can't remember if they did a patch repair in the road, but they did a patch repair at the um, culvert end where it had collapsed. Um, that isn't holding up very well. Um, they chose to use fiber rolls instead of queer logs, so <laughs> it didn't last very long. Um, so, but the culvert has actually collapsed um, in the roadway, so there is a sinkhole in the road which they have covered up with um, the metal sheets, what you call those, um, at the moment. And they were planning on doing the work this week, though I went down there today and they, it doesn't look like they've done the work, um, it still looks the same. So. Um, the emergency certification, I gave them an emergency certification to carry out the patchwork um, and they have 30 days to complete the work under that emergency certification. Um, however, they do need to actually address the, the issue that this culvert is failing and another one in this road has failed previously as well. So they have, the DPW has been um, working towards um, to that project and they have now engaged, um, I think, Coastal Engineering, um, I think it was Coastal Engineering, who I'm meeting with next week to discuss the um, permitting um, requirements for, for the actual replacement of those culverts. They, I don't think they're allowed to replace them under the emergency certification. You only have to do what you need to to make it safe. Um, so they will need to file with us for the actual culvert replacements in those locations. So we will see that coming before us uh, before too long. Mm -hmm. It's about time. And we've, we've got several several situations like that around town that. Yeah, I mean, the issue with this, the issue with this one is, I mean, I mean, they're looking to do a like for like replacement of the culvert, which, you know, we always like to look at, uh, take a bit of a closer look to see whether it can have an improvement. But this one is, you know, fairly limited. Um, marsh yeah. area behind it but the other thing is um, including in any issues future issues related to sea level rise and that road because that road is, is going to become an issue in the future so it will be interesting to see what design considerations are going to be included for that well that's long needed so otherwise we'll be doing this again in another year and a half so um, and the one right. up at Thatcher Shore Road, they are doing a, um, a study in that area too, because that one obviously needs to be replaced as well. Yeah. Study on that one. Okay. Uh, see anything else on that? You're good. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, then we move on to minutes. Uh, March nineteenth, twenty twenty. Everybody good on that? Anybody have I, any? I have a, a question on that, uh, Kelly. <coughs> Uh, the start time is listed as 4.30, but the chairman opened the meeting at 6.32. Is that just a typo? That's a good question. When did we, was that a regular, that maybe that meeting was a regular start time? I think I might have used a later version of minutes. So yeah, I think we actually started at 6.30. We didn't move to 4.30 till the later meetings, didn't we? Thank you, Tony. I, think it was I April. recommend approval of these uh, if we just change the start time. That's all. Right. Thank you. Okay. So moved. Is there a second? Well, actually, Ellie, you'll second it. Tom made the move motion. Oh, okay, I'll second it. Okay, uh, Kelly, you want to call the roll? Um, Hoops. Aye. Durkin. Aye. Um, Mohan. Aye. Lawrence? Aye. Bishop? Aye. Um, and Bernstein, you would abstain because you weren't at that meeting. So we've got enough, we've got five votes to one abstain. The motion carries. Okay, thank you. And on to the uh, minutes for May 21st, 2020. It looks like they had the uh, Change uh, changes requested changes that were made that were requested last time uh, were made as far as I can tell. Uh, unless Tom, did you have any others? No, I have nothing. Ellie, did you have anything? 
Nope, they look good to me. Rick? Agreed. Look good. Okay. Okay, so I make a motion uh, that we accept them as written. All right, thank you, Tom. Uh, second. Second. All right, uh, Ellie, thank you. Kelly, you want to call the roll? Oops. Aye. Lucan. Aye. Lucan. Aye. Lawrence. Aye. Bishop. Aye. And Bernstein. Aye. Okay, motion carries six to zero. I didn't, excuse me, I didn't mean to not ask Pat Mulhern. Pat, you're all right with that, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, staff updates, Kelly. Okay, so um, we've received an appeal to the Mattachie Road um, order, amended order of conditions. Um, at the moment, we have an appeal through the state regulations. Um, so um, we will maybe have a, an executive session in the future if we need to for, for that. Um, but just wanted to let you know that that had come in. Um, and basically with the state appeal, the, the state will take a look at it um, and um, work through their process um, independently and then bring, I guess myself and, and maybe the chairman in for a, for a site visit and um, move through that process. Um, the other update I have is at the moment, we have a tentative opening at town hall of, um, what date it actually was because I've written it down wrong. I think the 15th, July 15th, that town hall is going to um, reopen to staff. Um, obviously that could be subject to change, but that's the plan at the moment. Um, I have posted our next meeting, um, which is um, July 16th, um, as a virtual meeting, just because I needed to make a decision this afternoon before this announcement came out. So um, we'll work on a July 16th um, virtual meeting. Um, the, I guess what might be useful is to assess people's level of comfort with coming back to meeting in person because it sounds like we'll have a bit of flexibility on when we need to do that. Um, so if some people don't feel comfortable at that point with coming back to an in-person meeting, then we can continue, I think, um, depending on what comes out from the governor and, the, and changes with the open meeting law, um, we may be able to continue for a little bit longer to meet virtually. So um, if you want to let me know either uh, in the meeting or or separately, um, your thoughts on that, then I would welcome it. Would we adjust the time back to the 6.30 or? I yeah, I think that was the intention based on our last meeting was that we'd move it back to the old time once we were out of the um, emergency situation. Is that everyone's understanding? I believe so. So I don't know if you want to do that at the next meeting in July, on July 16th, or whether you want to look at more into um, August for that. So you said the next one is a particularly heavy agenda, is that correct? That's correct. So okay. maybe, maybe do, would it be easier, would it be better if we moved to, move the start time to five? That way it still gives us a little, little, you know, another hour and a half that we, that we could already be rolling. Uh, versus waiting until 6.30. I'm yeah. just throwing it out. I, I guess it's whether people feel like they'd like to have their dinner before the meeting. If it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> or during. Or during. I was say, if you, <laughs> that's the only advantage of, of having virtual meetings is you can also have dinner while we, while we, we have the, I, I don't feel comfortable eating at the, at the uh, uh, town hall there, but. Well, I think that's why Kelly doesn't have a video on. She's been eating the whole time. I'm sure that's, you know, that's. Well, most of the time you see the top of my head because I've got my head buried in files. So I really didn't think it was adding any value. I might be, Pat and Pat might be, uh, you know, who knows? She might be baking right now and having a whole, got a whole, uh, a whole bakery or something there. So just to be clear, are we talking about meeting person to person on the 16th or postponed or doing virtual 16th and then three I'm weeks planning, later? 
I'm planning for virtual on the 16th. I had to okay. submit legal ad, legal notice today, so I, I picked virtual for that one because we were still very kind of close to to the um, opening time. Yeah. Right. So um, the 16th, we would meet at 4.30. Uh, I think that's what we were just discussing, whether or not you wanted to keep it at 4.30 for the 16th or whether you wanted to move it later. I, for one, would like to move, keep it at 4.30, but I don't have as busy schedule as other people do. So I'll do whatever everybody My else My schedule wants. is not pressed, but 4.30 is good for me. Okay. Pat, uh, what are you? Oh, I'm sorry, Ellen. I will be out of town, so I'm going to stop from this conversation. Okay. Pat? 4.30 is good for me. Okay. Uh, Rick? muted or he's not there. Oh, Rick's not there. <laughs> he must be having connectivity problems. Uh, I think Rick was sort of maybe moving toward a little later, but. <clears throat> yeah, that, that may be more um, related to the schedule as we head out of summer. So I don't know whether he would be happy for a 430 for July and then we can look at it in August to go later. Okay, so it seems to me as though everybody's good with 4.30. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll check in with Rick, but everybody else seems to be okay with 4.30. And that might also be work to our advantage since, it's a, since it is a heavy agenda for, the, for, the, for July 16th. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. good. Everybody, yep. Yep. Okay. okay. I do have a question for Kelly. Um, have we heard anything more about uh, the lawsuit that uh, Davenport companies brought up to us uh, a couple of months ago? Um, yeah, I got an update from them, I think the end of last week um, with regard to the buffer um, restoration. <clears throat> the person who is helping them with that had a bereavement. Um, so they were giving them some extra time to come back with it. So they just gave me that as an update and I've I'll follow up with them again um, in the coming week and see how that's moving forward. Okay. I didn't know if there was anything new on that. It just sort of went quiet. Yeah, it did go quiet. And I was I'm focusing on getting all the rest of those um, permits sort of resolved. So uh, once that had been done, then I went back and asked for an update. And that was the update that I received. Okay. I have a question, Kelly. Sure. Um, you know, I mentioned at the town meeting they voted the budget and when the budget was an assistant for you, is that any, now that we're into the new year, two days in, mm -hmm. anything going on with that or is it too early? Um, I think that um, the request has been made. We're just waiting to hear back because there is a um, hiring freeze on. So um, we have to get approval. So we're just waiting to hear back at the moment. I think the HR director is off on um, leave this week on vacation. Okay, anybody else have anything? Did everybody get uh, Kelly's uh, email regarding uh, open meeting law? Just yes. to remind everybody about again about that, just to be, you, know, be, you have to be doubly sure about that. Um, Aye. It's just, it's, you know, so you don't, you don't get, you run afoul of, of, of the attorney general. <laughs> um, so uh, that, and then uh, I was going to say there is, uh, there are several uh, training opportunities coming up. There's a webinar that's coming up uh, in the, uh, I think it's in the next couple of weeks um, through the Association of Massachusetts Wetland Scientists. Uh, it's on um, Riverfront, the Riverfront, and it's being given by the Northeast Region Circuit Rider. So. I think, did, did I send that to you, Kelly, the, the link for that? Yeah, I think I sent it to everyone, so I should have it. Okay. Could, did you send um, it out to us, Kelly? Could you? Um, I think I did, but I can double check. I'm not sure I got it, but I just, uh, I I'm got, so screwy. Maybe I got distracted. <laughs> I'll, uh, A little. <laughs> Well, we still have time. <laughs> it's it's still it's still probably what well, I think it's I think it was the nineteenth if, if I remember right 
Does that make sense? Nineteenth, something like that. So, uh, It'll but be you a do Sunday. have to. You do have. No, oh, that probably. You know, probably not the not the nineteenth then. Um, it's it's later on in the month. So, what what time is what time is it, Ed? Because I know uh, the, they have the lunch webinars, and I I'm flat out during lunch. No, it's not a lunchtime. It's a four o'clock, I believe. Four to five, and it's on the twenty third. Twenty third. Oh, there yeah. you go. I'm just going to um, forward it now. Great. Yeah, I'll send it from my computer because I can't do it. Um, so yeah, I'll send that. <clears throat> okay. All right, anything else? Motion to adjourn, Ed. Yeah, if, if nobody has anything else, that would be good, Tom. Thank you. So moved. Second. Right. Second. Uh, Kelly, you want to call the roll? Oops. Aye. Durkin? Aye. Rohan? Aye. Lawrence? Aye. Bishop? Not there. Uh, Bernstein? Aye. Okay, motion carries five to zero to adjourn at 6.03. Happy 4th of July, everybody. Stay safe. All right. Stay safe, everybody. Have a Thanks, good one. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Okay, we'll see you. Thank you.